Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin and it's time for your weekly wrap up. I got a studio tour coming up for you very shortly, but before that, I do want to thank our newest Patreon supporters here. Uh, we have Fernando Vasconcelos, I hope I got his name right, Rup Sakar, Daniel, Gary Raymond, and Caitlin Bessler all gave uh, to the Patreon this week. I want to thank you all for your generous contributions and to everyone who's been contributing and everyone who's been watching. We are uh, really growing here as a channel and it's been really exciting over the last couple of months to see the subscriber numbers grow, the Patreon numbers grow, and I've got the new space that I'm already being more efficient in. So I'm very uh, excited about where things are going next and I really appreciate everybody's help to get me there. I did a lot of stuff this week actually. We went and looked at the Poto camera which was a very big disappointment. That was a Kickstarter that uh, I backed a while ago and what I uh, thought it was going to be interesting about it is that it's a stick-on camera that I thought did video and it does do video but it only does 15 seconds of it. It's kind of useless actually as a video camera. Uh, kind of useless as a still camera too. You can see the review and uh, get a feel for it. If you want it, I got it in back there for 20 bucks if you if you want to help get rid of it and take it off my hands. Uh, we also looked at the Asus VivoBook E403SA. A lot of you were asking about that. That is a Brasswell powered laptop from Asus, pretty reasonably priced at $399 with a 1080p display. So you can check out that review and see what it's all about. We also took a look at a new monitor from Dell with really thin bezels on it and a really nice pedestal stand. In fact, I like the stand that it has better than uh, the image quality of the monitor because you can swivel the monitor without having to move the entire stand has a nice up and down motion as well as some angular motion to it. Also really uh, nicely designed products. So you can check that one out. We also did a look at the NVIDIA Shield and having it run as a DVR. So our friends at Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run DVR, got it working on the Shield, not only as a client, but also as uh, the recording device and the server. So what we did in that video was recorded some live television, watched it on the Shield, and then also uh, had it connect to a Raspberry Pi that worked as a little cable box slash client for the Shield. It really is pretty cool. I think the uh, DVR project they're working on is getting uh, really close to a point where I'm ready to start replacing my media center stuff here in the house. So stay tuned. I'll let you know when that momentous day occurs. I also looked at a follow-up video on the Chewy High Book because as it turns out, uh, the screen blemishes I talked about in my review turned out to be a film that was over the screen. So they had one film on it already and then there was another layer you had to peel off. And a lot of other folks wrote in after I posted that review to say that they just noticed the same things. So they were using their uh, High Books for a while with that film on and didn't know they could take it off. So uh, there you go. So hopefully we provided a service to the community there. So now it is time for our big studio tour and I wanted to give you an update as to where uh, everything is at. So I'm going to take out this camera here. We're going to start in this area and kind of work our way around. Uh, there's still some empty parts of the uh, facility here because I haven't yet filled out everything just yet. But uh, let's take a look now and uh, through my eyes of my camera here you can see I'm looking at you right now. Uh, and we're going to take a walk around here and see what's going on. So this is my desk where I operate from and I actually kept the same workflow that I had in my other uh, portions of the house. So I have my TriCaster here running on this little tiny monitor here. Uh, we have our solid state disk recorder here and then my little uh, X key. I need to do a review of this. This is my X key and this is how I switch cameras live while I'm uh, recording for all of you. Uh, this is one of my cheap Logitech keyboards that I use for controlling the TriCaster. So it's nice to have all of that uh, integrated in there. And then if I walk around, I can control the TriCaster that way. Uh, the little uh, thing you see in the corner is powered by this Mac here and that's plugged into the TriCaster as well. And in case you're curious, that's what the TriCaster looks like. So that little box uh, does everything. And I have a button on there that I can stream live at any point in time. So it's a really uh, great piece of equipment and it has uh, contributed a lot to uh, making my channel a lot more efficient. So we have my audio mixer up there and then my uh, wireless receiver for the microphone that I wear. It's a Sennheiser kit and they are uh, making some really good stuff. I gave you a tour of the shelves earlier so you know what's on this already and I'll be updating this and maybe changing things out secretly over time. So you'll just have to notice when I do that. Uh, here is my Apple 2GS, my little retro uh, thing in the background. We're actually going to take that floppy drive out in a minute because I have a question about one of the disks back there. We're going to boot up something on an actually an even older computer than this one in a second. In here I keep a lot of stuff. So this is like where all my little cables and HDMI adapters and everything get stored. Our Raspberry Pi lives in there too. Uh, so I have this is a really convenient little place to get I get all the adapters that I need when I need to uh, get some work done. Uh, in here is, uh, let me zoom out. Oops, we're going the wrong way with the camera here. Uh, in here is my 
uh, little room where I store a lot of stuff. And I'm a little concerned because I had spent a lot of time and money trying to get my uh, foundation to stop leaking. And I noticed some water in here already. But uh, this is really cool because we have kind of like a, a dungeon in here. I think I've showed this before. Uh, this is where I store things. This is like my little warehouse for equipment before I use it. So a good place to keep everything so I don't mess up the facility too much. And we'll come back out here and you can get a better uh, wide angle view of where everything is at. So it's funny when you do these videos, uh, you see it, what you see looks a lot different than what it really looks like here. So it's really uh, kind of a very tight little space here that I've uh, zoomed in on, but you can see just how big the space is overall. Uh, so I'll kind of go around this way and you can get a better idea as to how the entire uh, room looks. So we have a lot of space down here actually, which is really nice because I have room to expand things out. Uh, and we've got um, some foam in the ceiling here. And I uh, did this to uh, kind of cut down on the echo because uh, initially I didn't have any furniture in here at all beyond just this, uh, this stuff. And it was really echoey here initially. Uh, so now we're going to go over here to the home theater nook. And I just got this couch in. Um, and I'll go and sit down on the couch and show you how that couch works in a minute too, because there's more to this couch than meets the eye. Uh, what I decided to do versus buying all this new stuff is I kind of went with things that I already had. So this is my old Pioneer Elite television. This is a 720p plasma and it doesn't have the best resolution, but what I like about it is that the black levels are really nice on these plasmas. You really can't beat this right now. So for movies and stuff, it's fine. Things like text and computer graphics are a little uh, harder, to, you know, harder to view on it. But what I'm going to do is kind of hold out until the, uh, the OLED TVs come out. And when that happens, I'll probably uh, go ahead and get a nicer new set for in here. There are OLED sets now, but they're not affordable. So I'm waiting for affordable OLEDs and then I'll uh, change my mind about that. Now, if you saw my video on the Shield, you can see that I am only using one device in here to control everything, and that is this. This is live TV, this is DVR, this is uh, movies and retro video games. Everything is being powered off of this. I can even stream games from my computer. It's nice to have a box that does all of that now, so that is what I'm using there. Center channel speaker, I've got a, a receiver that I received through the Amazon Vine program a while ago. This is a, uh, uh, look, it's an Ankyo or, or a uh, Harman Kardon, I think. Um, so that does all my digital home theater audio. I've got some older Klipsch speakers that I had here that I bought a while ago. These are just, it was like a little kit that came with uh, all the speakers you need for a quick and dirty 5.1 channel system. So we got the center channel there, the two uh, front satellites. I'm going to replace these with an extra set of larger speakers I have upstairs. I really want to get a little bit better quality out of the front. And then I have two of their uh, speakers from that kit up in the... Uh, up in the ceiling there too, and then it all kind of wires back over there. It's the nice thing about having drop ceilings is that you can run uh, cables very easily. Now I want to show you what's cool about this couch because it looks like a normal couch, which it is, um, but there's a little control on here if I can find it. Um, and what I can do when I just want to sit back and relax and watch some TV is I can just hit this button here and I've got myself a recliner. So this is nice. It's all automatic. It's plugged right into my uh, plug mold behind me and I'm good to go. And that's one of the things that I decided to do here is rather than having just like a couple of outlets on the walls, I put outlets everywhere. So I'm never without an outlet in this room. <laughs> so it's been really helpful to have plug molding uh, just about everywhere in the house. Now this area in the back here, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do. So I think I'm going to set up a little stand-up area over here so I can uh, stand up and do a product review or something like that. And then against this back wall over here, I'm going to put up a green screen area so I can do green screen stuff and uh, that sort of stuff. So I'm going to basically set up two more sets that I can use at any given time. I have uh, access to my backyard over there and then I put in one of these heat pump air conditioning systems here too, which has really been working quite nicely. So they're very efficient uh, and relatively quiet also. So I've been really pleased with how that's been coming together. And then on this wall, I'm going to set up a workstation for just doing stuff. So I'm going to have a, another Ikea desk that I have upstairs. I finally got an extra leg for it. So I'm going to put that back together and then uh, put the printer and then a monitor or two on this desk and have it be a place where I'm going to test equipment and everything. And then this is my uh, personal battle station area. So I have a nice window to the outside. I have my uh, 5K iMac here. I've got enough room on this desk for uh, working on computers. So I have a couple in here that we were reviewing or in the process of reviewing that I've been working on there. There's their boxes. I'm trying to keep it clean as, as clean as possible. And then I have my gaming PC over here, uh, the one I built with all of you a while ago. And then uh, the VR stuff is set up here also. I've been having a hard time figuring out how to store the VR gear. So right now it just kind of sits here. Uh, and then I've got the, uh, the sensors for the HTC Vive on 
uh, these posts are over here. So I'm probably going to, I'd love to do another live stream with the, uh, the VR at some point, maybe when some more games come out for it, maybe we'll uh, look at doing that. So uh, that is the entirety of the space right now. It's really coming together quite nicely. I have to say it's really nice working down here. It's actually really quiet, uh, much quieter than I thought it would be. I got a bathroom over there too, in case you hadn't noticed it. Um, so it really is like my own personal little, uh, little cave to do, uh, get work done and as well as do everything else that I want to do here on the channel. So I'm going to sit back down now and we'll continue with the wrap up. And now it's time for some q and I've got a fun one here to start with, and Cantankerous Dave wrote in about the Halley Project, and this was a, a disc that I have on my shelf back there. Uh, and when I did my Facebook Live little tour of the shelf, I uh, showed this disc because it was up front, and Cantankerous Dave remembered there's something about this game and hadn't thought about it in a while, and I have it right here. This is the original disc from like 30 years ago, and I'm just going to boot it up real quick because it did something that uh, very few Apple II games ever did uh, before or after. I'm just going to put the disc in my disk drive there and power this old Apple IIe on here. Uh, and we're going to go back to my camera here now and see uh, how all of this works. And uh, what you'll notice here, it's going to go through its little opening sequence. And it had this really awesome speech thing that it does uh, that I had never heard an Apple II game do. And you'll hear it here after it gets through its opening uh, credits here. And it's really, it's, it's actually pretty amazing how good this sounds. So give it a second here. Uh, this will come up in a second. Remember, this is 1985 or so. Uh, there is no speech hardware in this Apple. Listen up. We put the load. Almost there. It's almost done. <laughs> so, there it goes. Had to do its guitar riff there. Um, so that is on a little floppy disk that you just saw me put in there. Those disks only held 140K, yet it was able to play out that really good audio uh, off of that disk. And there really hadn't been any other game that I can remember that really had that lengthy amount of audio without the need for special equipment on the old Apple IIe. And this uh, certainly did that. The rest of the game is pretty good. You know, it's interesting about this one. It's funny here. I've got all my uh, friends who came over to play <laughs> with me here. So my friend Stephen Capson now, here's me. Um, and we can go ahead and just... Uh, go on the Raven mission. Basically, this was like a, a space um, navigation game, and it was actually pretty, it was, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was realistic, but you started at Halley's Comet, and you had to find planets and land on them in the solar system, and the way you navigated uh, was by looking at the stars, and they gave you an included star chart that you could navigate against, and then uh, you would head towards the planets based on uh, things kind of, you know, basically being out of place on the uh, star chart there. So really kind of a fun uh, game. You could go anywhere in the solar system you wanted to, and there was a uh, uh, ways to increase or decrease your speed. I'm remembering how to play this now all of a sudden. Uh, so I haven't played this in a long, long time, but it but didn't, didn't look the best, but I thought it was pretty cool the way it started up, and I figured I would uh, show all of you a little piece of history that uh, was able to do some pretty cool stuff on the old Apple II with audio. I'm not sure if it did this on the other platforms that game was written for, but I always thought it was cool, and I figured I would share it with all of you. So that is the Halley Project. Thought you might find that interesting. So our next question here came in from JN Jules, and he's excited about our 100 episodes of the wrap-up. In fact, I forgot to even mention that last episode was the 100th edition of the weekly wrap-up, which was pretty amazing to go that many uh, weeks consistently. I don't think I've missed one since I started doing them, so I, I sometimes get a couple days off, but I've been pretty consistent there. Uh, but he was wondering about uh, Daydream, which is Android's new virtual reality platform, and what my thoughts are on it. And I think this is actually going to take off quite a bit because, you know, what, what's happening with VR, and you saw when I uh, showed you my room tour here that I have the HTC Vive, and that's very expensive. It requires a very expensive computer. It's kind of out of reach of a lot of consumers. Even if they had the computer to run it, they still have to hook everything up. You could put these big posts up all over your room. I think if you have something like a cell phone that has some hardware built in that makes VR uh, accessible to people, it's going to do very well. And I think a lot of people will spend, you know, four or five hundred dollars on a cell phone, and if they're able to work in uh, some of the special sensors that they're going to put in for this. I think it's actually going to do quite well because I don't know if uh, really high-end graphics are all that necessary for a good VR experience. I think it's really that uh, the, the just the spatiality of it that I've been experiencing with the Vive uh, is enough for a lot of people. So I think it's actually going to be kind of like a, a, a sleeper uh, success and that no one's going to see it coming, but it's going to be a very popular VR platform when it gets put together. I still, though, have to say that that HTC Vive is just awesome. I have been having a blast with it. I wish I had more time to play with it, but um, it's just incredible. And I think if they can even get close to replicating that on a phone, it's going to be great. And if nothing else, if they can make it so that you can walk around a space with it, I think it's going to be extremely successful. That's the one thing that really, I think, sets the Vive 
live apart from uh, the Oculus and the upcoming PlayStation VR is that you can walk around these environments. And if they can do that on the phone uh, with whatever special chips they're putting on these phones to do it, I think it's going to be a home run. So we'll have to see what it looks like. Maybe I'll get one and whatever pieces I have to get for it uh, when it's made available here. And our next question comes from internet user who says, you keep saying we, and who is we, Lon? Well, that's a good question because really the channel, as far as uh, the production of the video from the shooting to the uploading is all me at the moment. But uh, when I say we, I'm actually referring to all of you who watch because a lot of what has gone into making the channel better has been the suggestions and the criticisms and the questions that I get uh, from viewers who watch. And certainly some people are trolls and say some nasty stuff to me and I kind of ignore those, but I do get a lot of constructive criticism from a lot of you uh, and it's really helped kind of get this channel uh, moving in a, in a direction that has led to more subscriber growth and everything else. So we do have people that uh, contribute money via Patreon. We have people who watch and uh, regularly contribute in the comments section. All of those things are valuable to me. So I really consider this kind of a joint effort that uh, we're all kind of working on this together because a lot of what I do uh, is based on what I think you all want to see. And when I, when I don't achieve that, uh, you all tell me and then I adjust and make things even better. So those are that's why I often refer to this as we because I really do feel like uh, we're all doing this together. And that's what's so cool about media in the 21st century is that it's no longer a me talking to you kind of thing. Even though this is kind of a one-way transmission of initial communication, there is a lot that flows beyond that uh, in the comment stream and in emails and all the other stuff that we do to communicate with each other. So that's why I say we uh, when I talk about the channel. And speaking of we, I need some suggestions from all of you because over the last uh, couple days, I've been looking at a lot of monitors on the channel. We had one that I posted. I did another one where I, which I just shot a little earlier earlier today and I'd like to get from you the kinds of things I should be focusing on when I'm looking at a monitor to review because it's a, another product category it's a little bit tricky because the quality of the display is only going to be as good as the display you're watching the video on so I have to really kind of focus on what I'm seeing what I'm looking for uh, and some of the other things like the physical attributes of the product but I would love to hear from you the things that you'd like to hear me talk about uh, so you can get a lot out of those monitor reviews uh, when I do them because it's kind of a newer product category for me so do let me know and we will all continue moving forward on that. So this week, we've got a bunch of stuff on the horizon here. Uh, the first is we're going to take another look at the NVIDIA Shield kind of in an indirect, maybe a direct way, uh, because I'm finally putting together my video talking about how I watch movies in my house. A lot of you have been asking me to do like a Cody versus Plex thing, and I've been reluctant to do a Cody versus Plex because they're actually complementary of each other, and I use them both in different ways. But in this video, you're going to see uh, how I take my Blu-ray movies, put them on my NAS device, and then stream them to my uh, NVIDIA box around the house as well as watch them on my phone and other devices via Plex as well. So you'll see all of that. I kind of broke down exactly how I did it. And I think I was able to do it in a pretty short period of time also. So for some of you, it may not be enough. For some others, it might be just enough. We'll see. Uh, but your feedback on that video would be greatly appreciated because that will help guide me in future stuff. But uh, the good thing is, is that the Shield is really now the single go-to device, as you saw when we went over to my home theater nook there, uh, because there is a new release of Kodi. It's a fork of Kodi called SPMC. It's been around for a while, but they kind of went dormant for a while, but now it's back up in uh, full operation because it's implementing features that the production regular version of Kodi isn't, uh, namely some of the high-end audio features and some of the frame rate stuff that's really important for making the Shield a good home theater PC. Uh, so you get all that now in this SPMC. It's on the Google Play Store. It's been updated. It's working great for me, uh, and that's really kind of sealed the deal, which is what led me to actually make the video. So you'll see that uh, in, a, in, in the upcoming video, which will be on the air this week, or at least on the interwebs this this week. And we're going to get to my uh, low-end PC build. So what happened was I uh, got the wrong case. So I, they had recommended a case to me that was the wrong size for the motherboard that they sent me. So I, I sent that one back. I got another case coming, hopefully Wednesday or Thursday. I'm going to build it live, but I don't know when I'm going to do it. I don't want to commit to a time to build the PC and have all you disappointed when I don't actually get it done because I've got kids, two kids and all this other stuff around the house. So I'm going to get down here and do the live stream when I can. So what you want to do is turn the notifications on on my channel. So when I go live, you'll uh, see me uh, showing this uh, construction to you live. But I do have all the parts here, at least everything but the case. So um, what I did is you saw a few of the parts from last week. So we have the uh, AMD uh, A10 7800 processor that AMD sent to us. They also sent us a fan and heat sink for it. Uh, the folks from PNY got involved here too. So they sent me some uh, DDR3 RAM for this. This is 16 gigabytes. I think it only costs like 60 bucks for 16 gigs of RAM. Can you believe that? But uh, you can get uh, eight gigs for a little bit less. So uh, we're gonna put it 16 into this one, but 
I have a list, a shopping list up for the four gi uh, eight gigs of RAM, so you can get a little bit of a better price on that. Uh, and they sent me a 120 gig SSD that doesn't cost all that much either. So we have that. I have an extra one here. Uh, and then we've got the motherboard here. This is an ASRock motherboard, and this is what AMD sent over. So. All in, what you're about to see me build, you can build yourself with eight gigs of RAM versus the 16 uh, for about $315, including the case and the power supply. Excuse me, I put all the stuff down here. Including the case and the power supply and everything else. So that's a pretty good deal, I think. We'll see how it performs. I mean, we're not gonna get you know, a really high-powered gaming device out of here, but my objective here is to see if it will do better than a comparably priced Intel machine uh, running with the same specifications. So we'll see how this comes together. I think it's gonna be a little bit faster in the graphics department because I think these AMD chips do better there. So we'll see. And I wanna thank uh, AMD and PNY for sending over some of the parts to help make this happen. And I think I might do, after we get build this thing and play with it a little bit, I'll probably do a giveaway on the computer when it is uh, all done being reviewed. So stay tuned and we will offer that. I also got a new ThinkPad in that I just finished shooting a review for. This is the ThinkPad 13. And what's nice about this is that, first of all, it's silver. So if you don't like the normal color of the ThinkPads, uh, you can get a choice now, silver or black. Uh, and what's really nice is that it's about 500 bucks, but it's a really nicely performing device and really well built too. I'm really impressed with it. And you'll see that full review coming up a little bit later this week. So a lot of stuff, I've been very productive this week. I've been so proud of myself for getting all these videos done. I have like even more than that uh, on this hard drive here waiting to be posted. So we've got a good, uh, almost a week's worth of content already done here. And it's just the, uh, just Monday. So I'm really quite uh, pleased with my productivity over the weekend. Now, if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel as those folks did at the outset. You can also do a one-time contribution at lon.tv via my YouTube fan funding feature. Uh, do though let me know if you contribute because I, it doesn't tell me who contributes unless somebody volunteers the fact that they did. So if you made a contribution there, uh, send me an email at lon at lon.tv or just leave a comment on the channel uh, just to let me know that you did that so I can make sure you get into the credits at the end of the month and that you're thanked on the weekly wrap-up video. So that's another way to help the channel. And you can go shopping at Amazon via lon.tv slash Amazon. That will take you to my Amazon Amazon landing page where you can buy stuff on Amazon and everything you buy there, I get a small portion of the sale, which goes into helping us buy more stuff to review on the channel. It's a nice uh, cyclical process and a lot of it we buy from Amazon anyhow. So if you're able to, that'd be great. Uh, if you shop there, your prices won't be affected by clicking on that link. You get the same price, but we get a little portion of that sale. So that'll do it for this week. If you want to engage, you can go to lon.tv slash email to get on my email list. I'm now doing a weekly email. So this wrap up video kind of is the capstone of that uh, email. Then I put all the videos that I did the week before on there too. So that will be coming out now once a week. That's at least my, my goal here. I did one already and my next Next one's gonna go out uh, later this evening or tomorrow morning. Lon.tv slash Facebook for our Facebook page. I do pop on live there a little bit more frequently than I do on YouTube just because it's easier. Uh, so you can check me out there. The Reddit page is at lon.tv slash Reddit. And you can go to the store to buy the old stuff that I reviewed and no longer need here. So these are the things that I buy and then resell so that uh, you can get a good price on something that's relatively new. It's just used long enough to review it. Uh, so usually they're in pretty good shape and uh, you do ship out pretty quickly when you order from there. So that will do it for this week. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. Keep those questions and comments coming and thank you all for your support. Thanks. See you next. I'll see you next week. Bye. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.